Hey everyone, welcome back to John's Watch. Today I'm very excited to be taking a look at Assassin's Creed Mirage. This game was released on all major platforms on October 5th, 2023. I'm playing the PC version here. Its regular price for the uh, regular standard edition is $70 Canadian or your regional equivalent. And I just want to say thank you very much to Ubisoft for sending me a review code for this. So I've played uh, about four and a half hours. Yeah, four hours, 22 minutes of it. So we're going to hop back into my save file here. Um, and we're not going to do any of the story missions or anything. We're just going to do um, some side quests. You can do these contracts, which is kind of very little mini quests you can do. So we're just going to do one or two of those. Like you can see right there, contracts. That's what we're going to do. So this game started off apparently as it was going to be DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And in Valhalla, there's a character called Basim, who is, is one of two characters, I believe it was, who, who teaches uh, Eivor, the main character of Valhalla, how to be an assassin. And so in this game, you play as Basim, who's the one who taught Eivor. So this is uh, Basim's origin story. It's got the ties to Valhalla, which is why it was going to... Um, just be like DLC, and now it, it's grown into its own standalone game. But the key thing with Mirage is that it is nowhere near as expansive or as big as the last three Assassin's Creed games. So Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla were all very different to the uh, the old Assassin's Creed games. They were huge, sprawling, open-world uh, action RPGs, pretty much. This one is a lot closer to... The, the roots of the Assassin's Creed series. It's a lot more linear, uh, a lot more stealth focused than the, the newer games were. And you're probably not going to be able to tell just from, from the world map, but the, the world map is considerably smaller. Um, like over here is where I started the game. Um, and then I got teleported to over here to the city of Baghdad. And then just before I started recording, I did a mission where I, I rode my horse over here and it took me like two minutes to get there. And then we walked over here and it took like barely any time at all. So the world is much, much smaller. You can see it's not filled with tons of collectibles and icons and stuff. It's a really pared down experience, which I, I think is probably a good thing. Like I, I really loved Odyssey and I, I quite enjoyed Valhalla, but I put 70 hours into Odyssey and like 100 hours into Valhalla. And they were just, those games were so big, but apparently this one's only about 30 or so hours. So I guess a, a good thing to do to start with would be to go to the investigation menu here, which is kind of like your journal, your quest log. Um, it looks like it's going to be like a murder board kind of thing, which is fun. Uh, I've just killed my first major target. But down here we've got contracts. And I think I've got two contracts right now. Uh, I can steal a boat and I'll get a bonus if I remain undetected. Or I can steal a key and I'll get a bonus for not killing anyone. Looks like I'll also actually get two skill points for doing this one. So this sounds pretty good. I'm gonna try our best not to kill anyone. Okay, so here is the bronze mirror heist, which is the one we want to do, so we'll track that. Uh, I would actually don't have uh, a, a synchronization point too close to it, so we're gonna go here and then we're just gonna walk through Baghdad a little bit. So that'll be very exciting for you to see. All right, here we are. We are in the lovely city of Baghdad, and um, I guess, you know, we've, we've got like a big view here, quite a, a bustling city, there's a lot of people around. Um, performance in this is is really excellent. Um, I'm like constantly around like 90, uh, 90, 100 FPS. Um, I, I was going to you know, talk about performance a little bit, we'll do it at some point. Um, a mechanic here, if you look in the bottom right of the screen, I've got like a notoriety level and Right now, people are going to attack me on sight, which is what was happening when I landed. And the way to uh, decrease that is I had to bribe, um, I don't remember what he's called, is some like public speaker. Or, uh -oh. great, he's calling guards on me. Um, or if you see this thing that's 30 meters away on my, my compass there, is uh, the other thing you can do is tear down wanted posters. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just such a fun little thing, like a such a neat way to uh, get rid of like your your wanted levels. So here we go. Remove that. That dropped me way down in the the bottom right. We're just gonna make it worse by pickpocketing. There's another poster over there. I think we'll just need to get rid of two more. So if we get rid of this, lovely. 
And there's one right around here. We're gonna be good. Best key to the shadow. We're safe. We're just gonna pickpocket this guy. Uh just just cause why not? <laughs> and off we go. Now we're now we're safe to walk around again. So yeah, it's just, you know, it's just kind of a, a small little thing of getting rid of your, your wanted level, pretty much. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I've never found it difficult to find the posters. Um, so I don't know. I, I think it's pretty neat. Let's just pickpocket this guy as well. Basically, you just pickpocket and then, like, run off. Otherwise, because they will realize that they've been pickpocketed after a little bit. So it's a good idea just to, to get away. But yeah, performance has been excellent. Um, like right now, we're in bustling streets. I'm at 72 FPS here. Yeah, 70 FPS, uh, which will look absolutely fine on the video. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, I'm pretty much always hovering around 90, 100, which is very good. Um, the game does have DLSS support, which is excellent. I do have that on and that's definitely doing some of the heavy lifting, I'm sure. Uh, I'm just going to make it daytime because I always think it looks a bit better for videos. There we go, it's daytime now. Lovely. I guess the only thing um, to add to performance is that the cinematic cutscenes, not I'll put some footage on screen right now, the cinematic cutscenes are only in 30 FPS, which is, is very jarring when uh, it goes from a cinematic cutscene to uh, back to in-game in or to like an in-game cutscene. And it's, it's just very jarring that it goes from 30 FPS to like 90. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why they went for that. Um, right now we are climbing this tower to get a, a synchronization point. Uh, there's so many less than in like the last three games. There we go. And we, we just use these to fast travel pretty much. And they reveal some like points of interest on the map. Look at this city. This city is massive. It's a, it's a really impressive city. And now we do a big dive. Beautiful. <laughs> Classic. Um, it, it is, this feels, it feels very like Valhalla, I guess. Um, which isn't surprising, because, you know, it did start off as, as DLC, as an expansion for it. Um, but yeah, it is funny, you know, I played a hundred hours of Valhalla, and like, five minutes into this, I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's all coming back to me instantly, because it, you know, it just feels like Valhalla. Uh, the UI is, like, exactly like Valhalla. Uh, the controls and everything is exactly like it, uh, which is, is totally fine. Uh, just before we start this mission, um, I was almost not able to record this video. Um, I'm playing version 1.0.4 right now, which is um, as of October 8th, the most up-to-date version. And in that version, there is the probably the worst usage of the chromatic aberration video effect that I've ever seen. And... There's no toggle to get rid of it in the game, which is really bad. But it, it's extra bad because the the effect is so intense in this game, and it's horrible. And so I started up the game, um, like two days after I got the key. And I played five minutes, and I was I felt so sick for the rest of the day. It was just awful. Some people will be totally fine with Chromatic Aberration, but it made me feel so incredibly sick. And like I said, I played five minutes, and I was just like, off for the rest of the day. It was brutal. And so I was going to have to leave the video until, or have to, to leave even starting the game, until it got patched, which it'll hopefully have been patched in, like an option to disable it by the time this video comes out. Ubisoft have said that they're aware of it, and they'll hopefully be adding it in. But luckily, an amazing modder actually uh, made a mod to remove it. I'll hopefully have put some footage on uh, screen right now of, of me toggling the chromatic aberration on and off. Because um, I can't toggle it right now. Um, I can toggle it sometimes, but not right now. But just know that apparently I'm super susceptible to that particular video effect. I think it's why um, I felt so incredibly sick when I played uh, Bloodborne. So it is just a massive relief that it is... Uh, it's, it's toggleable and was able to be disabled uh, so soon after it came out because I was worried I was going to have to put this video off for like at least a week. Okay, so we need to steal the key here. You can see when I start getting close, um, the, the yellow bar at the compass shows that I will be trespassing. So we're going to stand out here. We're going to summon my bird. And we're just going to hover around here and have a look around. We can... Uh, this is very similar to, like, all Assassin's Creed stuff. That guy must have the key? Okay. 
uh, basically we just hover around and we, we can pause and and just mark over things. There should be this guard somewhere. There's a guard. There's a guard there. Okay, actually not too bad. This place looks decently small. Um, so we we need to not kill someone, right? Jeez. So I'm gonna have to try and pickpocket. There is my key holder. Let's see what we can do. So let's. We're just gonna do a save out here, because uh, if it goes poorly, I can restart. <laughs> okay, so the key holder's up there. So we're gonna sneak, and we have to not kill anyone. So I'm guessing we have to sneak up behind him and pickpocket him. That's my guess. If the key holder stays by himself upstairs. He's like right down in the crowd. That is pretty rough. I mean, if we just, do we just sneak around here? There's lots of bushes we can use. This is pretty close if we can just get behind him. No! But maybe he'll like patrol back over here. Let's just wait here and see if he comes back. <laughs> and see if I can pickpocket him. Okay, he's coming over here. I think he's going to stand right in front of me. I really hope I can just pickpocket him. I can assass the ass. Okay, pickpocket. Got the key. Excellent. Now on to my prize. I gotta steal the mirror. Should attend more parties. Mirror's down there. I need to find a way in. I guess we can just walk in the like basically the front door. <laughs> I guess that'll do. Jeez. Uh hey lads. Uh, we all good in here? I think so. Where the heck is the mirror in here? Oh, is it this? Sick. A nice piece of work, but I have no time for idle admiration. Nobody, nobody seems to care that I'm in here. So that's good. Now we just sneak away? It's the best way out of here. He's not looking, he's not looking. That's all spiky. Uh oh. If we hop here, can we jump up there? Nope. Actually, we can use a lift over here. Let's use this lift. Hopefully he doesn't notice me. See ya. Wee. Ignore me. <laughs> it's working fine. That was uh that was so much longer than I was expecting that to take. But we're almost home free. Yes, we're good. Nobody noticed me. Amazing. Okay, let's... Well executed. Jeez. Let's run and deliver this. Let's do a sprint. Ooh. There's something special to steal here? Yeah, this guy's got a, a valuable to pickpocket. So let's just grab that. It's going to be a really tough one of these. Nice. And actually, we need to take it back to the person we're, we're going to right now. So that's very lucky. Oh, no, we're just hiding it. I trust the right person finds it. Yay, contract done. <laughs> that took so much longer than I was expecting. Oh, that, yeah, that got me two skill points, which is great because now I think I've got three. So here's the skill tree. It, it's it's pretty simple, honestly. Um, what have I got so far? Like, break fall. I automatically do a roll when I'm, I'm falling. Uh, train assassination seems pretty good. Like, here I've got um, my bird... Makes it easier to tag enemies, which is good. That would make it even easier. What else can I do? Reveals the patrol path of marked enemies. Doesn't seem like that helpful. Uh, more healing would be good. Yeah, I think let's go for better, like faster tagging, because that is very useful. And I like that it asks for confirmation there uh, before I spend all my skill points. <laughs> Just like the last... God, I don't know how many, but definitely since Origins, there is a Ubisoft store with a bunch of um, just cosmetic. They're not real. They're not even cosmetic. Like there's cosmetic armor, which has like tangible effects in game, and also weapons, cosmetic weapons, which also have tangible effects in game. Um, and then there's also like, there's a couple of free ones you can get through Ubisoft Connect. So like this one right here, old Basim costume. That's the one I've been wearing. Um, that is 
uh, the outfit that he wears, the Basim wears in Valhalla. So that's, I thought that was a fun one. Uh, it's just a free one you can unlock in Ubisoft Connect, so I, I went for that one. Uh, you can see I'm wearing the the Fire Demon outfit. You know, it's it's not it's not accurate to the the gameplay. It doesn't fit in at all. Like this Jin outfit, that one like at least sort of looks more like it. Uh, but like this is this is more like what you're supposed to look like, pretty much. But the Fire Demon outfit is just so much better. Look at its effect. Sets the target on fire after a successful assassination and burns the body away after a short delay. So if you wear this, you literally don't have to worry about hiding bodies. You just assassinate someone and then they evaporate. <laughs> Same with the weapons. Uh, burning blade, attacking burning enemies, sets weapon on fire for 10 seconds and can apply a fire to, stack, to attack to enemies. Uh, these are like the basic swords, and then these are the DLC swords, and they're all very, very strong. <laughs> Same with the daggers, which is how you parry enemies. Um, I guess I'll probably try and get into some combat so we can see that. Um, parries set the enemy on fire. They're really OP. Um, you can obviously totally do without them, but yeah, they are they are definitely there. Uh, but luckily you can equip these costumes to cover up your armor, because... I mean, like, it's kind of cool. Like, the burning arm's kind of cool, but I would stick out so much. I feel like I would not be very um, immersed in the world if I'm walking around looking like this. So that's why I put on, like, this, this outfit, because that looks pretty cool. The Deluxe Edition also comes with some Prince of Persia items, which is quite cool. Um, but, like, this talisman I can equip is pretty neat. You know, it's a little bit glowy and distracting, but it also has a really annoying sound effect, so I, I don't even use any of the talismans. <laughs> Because this is the only one I've got, but the sound was so annoying I had to not use it. So I'm just going to do a save now, and then I'm going to try and find some guards to assassinate and, and get into a little bit of combat, so you can see that. Uh, I'm sure there's... Oh, here we go. We're not allowed in... Or are we not allowed here? I guess we're not allowed in here. So uh, if we hop into here, and we'll, we'll sneak... Here we go. Here's, here's an archer. So we're just going to try and assassinate him die. Now we will watch his body. So normally I, I should probably hide that. <laughs> but uh, there he just burns away. So now let's let's fight this guy. Hello. Hey. hey. So it's, uh, it's kind of like Dark Souls combat, which is great. You can dodge. Uh, I rebound it to B. Um, you can parry with left bumper, which is great. Hey, what up, guys? Uh, unless they glow red before they attack, and then you have to dodge, like that. You can do a heavy attack by holding right bumper. Bam! This guy looks a bit tougher. Gotta dodge him. He's a big heavy boy. He's dying, actually. Uh, so you have to get behind him in order to actually damage him. Oh, God. I got a parry on one of them. There, look, everybody's going on fire now. It's great. <laughs> oh, I'm struggling to land the parries. Here we go, let's beat up this guy now. There, look at that parry. Very cool. He's on fire. We just need to get behind him. Like that. Uh oh. Like. God damn it. Like. Ow. Please. Like that. Got him. <laughs> We did it. And you can see my notoriety's gone up in the, the bottom right there. No, I don't think people know where I am. Hooray. I don't know what's actually in here. Is there treasure here? No, it doesn't look like there's anything in here. I don't know why I would be here. <laughs> Maybe it's like a, a mission area later. Really good so far. Uh, like I said, I'm you know four some hours in, four and a half, probably five hours in by this point. Um, and it's, you know, about 30 hours or whatever. And there's been no modern day stuff at all, which is such a relief. I don't think there will be, because, like, we're specifically playing as, like, a side character from Valhalla. So there shouldn't be any modern day stuff, but I, as someone who started Assassin's Creed with Origins, I guess with Odyssey, really, uh, I am so glad there's no modern day stuff, because I hate the modern day stuff so much, I don't care about it. But it, it's it's not in this game so far, so uh, fingers crossed that that keeps up.
Uh, I took a couple of notes when I was playing the first bit, so I'm just kind of going over those now. Uh, the introduction, like, prologue segment, I guess, was really, really long. Um, it was like part tutorial, part story, part prologue. But I think it was probably like about an hour and a half or something until I like fully got into the game. It was just much, much longer than I was expecting. Another thing is that some textures in game are really, really low quality. Um, like this isn't the best example, but it's it's a decent example. You can see it's just, I don't know, the straw texture is, is really not good. Um, some wood looks really bad as well. Um, it's mostly in cutscenes. Like this is okay. That, that's probably why... It feels so well optimized. <laughs> it feels so smooth to play like all the time. It's like some of the texture work is is really not good. <laughs> so all in all, I've really been enjoying this so far. Um, it's not my favorite setting. I think like I don't know if they'll top Odyssey for me because I, I really love the the ancient Greece setting. That was so much fun for me. Um, you know, Baghdad isn't as interesting to me. But again, as as someone who started with the you know, the new era of Assassin's Creed games where it was just an open world uh, action RPG kind of thing. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. It, it's definitely got enough of kind of the, the newer Assassin's Creed games for me to enjoy it. But I also don't mind that it's not a huge sprawling open world, like I'm kind of tired of those as well. So if, if you're looking for an, an Assassin's Creed game, a modern Assassin's Creed game that's actually decently close to the, the classics, uh, this is this is a good one to go for. And you really don't need to know anything about Valhalla to play this. Uh, Robbie was asking the same thing, like, he loves Assassin's Creed, but I don't think he's played any of the, the modern, like, the new ones, like, uh, Origins onwards. And he was like, can I jump into this one without playing Valhalla? And I was like, yeah, all you need to know is Basim trains your character in Valhalla. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so there you go, that was my hopefully not all that rambly video on Assassin's Creed Mirage. Overall, very impressed with it. Really good PC port, apart from the missing toggle for chromatic aberration. There's lots of decent settings and, and some really cool graphs, like you can see on here. Uh, loads of stuff you can toggle off, like depth of field and motion blur, you can get rid of those, luckily. Uh, lots of upsampling types, are pretty much all the ones you would need, which is very impressive. And it, yeah, it's just really nicely optimized, feels good to play. They just really need to add that... Uh, uh, toggle for chromatic aberration because that is painful. There you go. That was a look at Assassin's Creed Mirage on PC. Thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later. Bye!